Hello and welcome back to another episode of Women Are the Backbone of the Film Industry. Today I want to talk to you about a woman named Dorothy Arzner. She was a director and an editor in the 30s and 40s and launched the careers of heaps of Hollywood stars like Lucille Ball and Catherine Hepburn. For 16 whole years, she was the only female director working in the Hollywood system. Not only did she direct Paramount's first talking picture, but she was the first woman to join the Director's Guild of America. And trust me, that is just the tip of the iceberg. The year is 1919 and our girl Dorothy is 22. She decides she wants to make movies. So she somehow gets a meeting with this guy named William DeMille, who was at the time a major director at what was the parent company of Paramount Pictures. He tells her to spend a week on set watching how things work. And she decides if one was going to be in the movie business, one should be a director because he was the one who told everyone else what to do. She basically just wanted to be in charge and I respect that. So she ends up getting a job in the script department and within six months, she becomes an editor at one of Paramount subsidiaries where she edits no less than 52 films. Her first taste of directing came in 1922 when she was editing a movie called Blood and Sand. She actually shot some of the bullfighting scenes, edited them together with some stock footage and saved the company thousands of dollars. But was she credited? Come on, you should know how this works by now. Of course she wasn't. After dipping her toes into the directing waters, she started working with a director called James Cruz, who was working over at Columbia, which at the time was a much smaller studio than Paramount, but it gave her a massive amount of leverage. Columbia offered her a film to write and direct, and obviously she took it. And so she was all packed up and ready to go. But as she was doing the rounds saying goodbye, she bumped into the head of Paramount's New York studio. Hey just off to Colombia to, you know, become a massive star. Just thought I'd say bye. <laughs> hey, hang on here. Just, just, what if I were to offer you a position here at Paramount in the scenario department and maybe there would be an opportunity for you to direct in the future? <laughs> Not unless I can be on set in two weeks with an A picture. I'd rather do a picture for a small company and have my own way than do a B picture for Paramount. <laughs> So he gives her a film on the spot and Fashions for Women becomes Dorothy Arzner's first film released in 1927. She basically got her first movie by threatening to leave if they didn't give her one. And she really didn't even have any directing experience yet. Dorothy was the definition of fake it till you make it. Maybe my favorite thing about Dorothy that I read is that she was ready to walk out the door if she didn't get her way. It was literally her way on the highway and because she was making the studio too much money, they didn't want her to leave. So she just always got her way. So you know boom mics, right? Microphones on the end of big sticks to record audio. Dorothy Arzner invented the boom mic. She invented the boom mic. She invented the boom mic. I'm sorry, I've just got to go tell everyone. She invented the, the, she invented the boom mic. She, hey everyone, she invented the boom mic. In 1929, Dorothy was shooting a movie called The Wild Party, which was Paramount's first ever talking picture. And she wanted to be able to record audio with the actors moving around. So what did she do? She put a microphone on the end of a fishing pole so she could follow around the actors as they moved around. This not only made it easier on the actors, but it also meant that the audio was just better quality. It literally changed the game. And I mean, means that we have this entry on tvtropes.org. In 1943, Dorothy decided to retire from Hollywood and she never went back. No one really knows why, but it's thought that it's just because her films weren't being received as well, both financially and critically, that it also could have been due to the increase in sexism following the introduction of the Hayes Code in 1934. And if you don't know what that is, look it up because it's kind of messed up. After leaving Hollywood, she made commercials for Pepsi. She made training videos for the Women Army Corps during World War II. The US Army actually loved them so much that they made her a major, but she turned it down. She taught at UCLA for four years during the 60s. She even taught Francis Ford Coppola. We might not have the Godfather if it weren't for Dorothy Arzner. <laughs> Dorothy's films featured women who were three-dimensional. They pushed the boundaries of how gender was being depicted at the time, and just by being who she was, so did Dorothy. I mean, look at these photos of her directing. She knew that what people saw on screen meant something, that the stories that were being told could open up doors and change the world. As the only woman director in the Hollywood system, she opened up doors for other women. Not only those who would follow in her footsteps, but she helped other women get a foot in the door in her own productions. In a 1932 interview, she said, 
There should be more of us directing. Try as any man may, he will never be able to get the woman's viewpoint in directing certain stories. A great percent of our audience is women. That too is something to think about. Dorothy never won an Oscar. The only award she ever got was a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So if you see it, don't just walk past it. Remember that for 16 years, she was the only woman directing in the Hollywood system. Remember that she was ready to walk out at a moment's notice if she didn't get her way. Remember that she invented the boom mic. A woman invented the boom mic and her name was Dorothy Arsner. Links to further reading and sources will be in the description below. And if you missed my video on the first narrative filmmaker, Alice Guy Barche, then that will be down there too, also somewhere here. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've fallen in love with Dorothy as much as I have. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Dorothy Arsner invented the boom mic. That may have been a bit much. <laughs>